He's Brian Hoyer, Houston Texans quarterback. At least one of the quarterbacks there. How do I introduce you, Brian? Texans starting quarterback? <laughs> I don't need to have to ask someone else on that one right now. Well, what do you feel? Um, you know what I feel like right now? Uh, I'm, at, I'm at a place where... Um, I'm trying to go out and get better every day. Obviously, we got our first game coming up on uh, Saturday, and just go out and and execute. You know what we've been going over in, in training camp, and just um, you know let that uh, decision be left up to Coach O'Brien. And you know, for me, just really, really worry about myself and how I can be the best quarterback for this team. Oh, come on, that's football talk. That's <laughs> quarterback speak. But how do you feel? I mean, are you confident? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think, um, you know, when I was a free agent, um, looking at the options, this was the place that I wanted to come. And, um, you know, I couldn't be happier with where I am. And and just, you know, the team, my teammates, the coaches, I feel, um, you know, confident in myself and and, and this team and and what we've, um, you know, been able to work towards these past, I think we've had 10 practices. So, um, you know, I feel good with with where I'm at. And obviously, you're always continuing to get better. But I think, um, you know, for being the first, being here for my first year, granted, it's a system I'm familiar with, um, you know, uh, a comfort level, but continuing to grow, I think, at the same time. What's hard knocks like? Um, you know what? A lot of people said you won't notice them after the first couple of days, and I think that's pretty much true. Um, you know, I didn't get, I didn't watch it or anything like that. Um, I got a lot of text messages from people, but um, you know what? They they do a good job of kind of staying out of the way and, and um, you know, letting us do our job, and hopefully, you know, it's good television. Can you goof on J.J. Watt? Um, yeah, we try to. I mean, um, you know, when you have a guy like that, um, I think someone has to kind of mess around with him too, because usually he, he's the one messing around with everybody else, and you kind of got to give it back to him a little bit too. And and I think he likes that. He wants to be one of the guys, and and he goes out there and works his butt off. So I think um, you know we try to get him to jump off sides. That's always a, a joke, or um, you know, batting the balls, things like that. Like today, I threw one over his head and he didn't get it, and you know, you make a little comment here or there. But um, it's all in good fun, and and I think for me, I'm glad that he's on my team. I, I'm I'm glad I don't have to play against him anymore. But but is there somebody that you played against or played with that has the similar intensity of J.J. Watt? Um, you know, I, I'd compare it to Tom Brady. I mean, the guy, um, you know, works so hard, is is obsessed with being perfect, um, you know, obsessed with his craft. I think, um, you know, there's similar, um, hmm. you know, desire there, I would say. And, and I think the thing with J.J. is, is – you know, he goes out there and works, and, and, he, and he doesn't care what anybody else thinks. He, he puts in the extra time. He, he works his butt off, and that's why he's the, you know, the best defensive player in the league. Did you learn more in Cleveland or New England? Uh, definitely in, in New England, and I think that's you know, part of the reason that I chose Houston was the familiarity with Coach O'Brien, Gotsi, the offense. Um, you, know, you learn so much in, in New England, whether you know, you're learning about offense, you're learning about defense, um, situational football, and I think that's kind of what, what uh, Coach O'Brien brings down here, you know, his experience with that. And, you know, so we're always going over situational football. Today we did four-minute, two-minute, no huddle, um, you know, backed up. We're always constantly, you know, working those situations because rarely are you ever just in, you know, a, a first, second, third down, move the ball. You know, there's always some kind of situation going on during the game. And, and the more you prepare, I think the, the better you are when it comes game time. He's Brian Hoyer, the Texans, maybe starting quarterback, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. What do you think of uh, ball inflation? Silly rule? Um, to be honest, I didn't. I don't think you know. I even had any idea about it until you know that came out. And um, you know, I think for me as a quarterback, everybody likes the, the ball a certain way. And, and our equipment guys here have done a good job of breaking those footballs in for us. So you know, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I think if anything, there'll be more awareness about it now. What do you? How do you like the football? Well, I, I like it, you know, broken in. I don't like a fresh ball out of the box. Sometimes you see these balls that come out of out of the box and they got some resin on them. They're bright red. I mean, you gotta you gotta work them in. You gotta you know use them a bunch. You gotta get the receivers catching them. You know, get them rubbed on the grass a little bit. So I think, um, you know, it's kind of like a, a baseball pitcher. You know, they want those balls broken in. And and I think with a football player, you know, especially a quarterback, you you don't want a fresh ball right out of the box. Why didn't it work out in Cleveland? You know what? I don't know. I mean, I think we put our best foot forward. It kind of, you know, gave away at the end. And I'm just happy to be here in Houston now, to be honest with you. I think, um, you know, things happen for a reason, and, and I'm excited to be here. But do you think that they were looking out, they want Manziel to start? Um, I don't know. That's that's a question you have to ask other people. Like I said, I'm focused on, you know, myself now and, and being a Houston Texan. Is, is it uncomfortable to talk about? 
Um, not really. I think, like I said, I'm, I'm so happy to be where I am, um, to be with a coach that I'm very familiar with. I, I really credit Coach O'Brien to really m- me even being in the NFL. Um, you know, he came and, and scouted me at Michigan State, and I met with him. And obviously being undrafted, you don't go in, you know, having high hopes. You just go and, and try to see what plays out. And, and I think he always, um, you know, saw the potential and, and um, you know, pushed me to get better. And, and to be able to reunite with him has been everything I could have hoped for. Yeah, I, I guess it was the hometown. It was just a great story. You know, the hometown kid starts for the Cleveland Browns. Sure. And, uh, you know, maybe I put more emphasis on that, understanding what it must have been like to grow up to play for your hometown team. And yeah, then, I think, you know, one day down down the road, I'll appreciate it more than, than I do right now. I'm, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm caught up with my career at this point. So I think, you know, one day, 20 years down the road, when, when I realize, you know, how cool that was, I think I'll have a greater appreciation for it. Are you a playoff team? Um, you know, that's what we're working for. I think for me, like I said, going back to free agency, looking at the teams that were interested, I looked at the Houston Texans. Here they are, 9-7. and seven. They had to play four different quarterbacks. You know, I played against these guys last year. I knew how good their defense was. And then you look at the, the roster and, and um, you know, see the playmakers they have on offense and the offensive line. I read a stat that, you know, the, the Texans' offensive line has given up the fewest amount of sacks, I think, in the last three years. So, you know, there's a lot, a lot to like that was on paper that, you know, I was, you know, it was kind of a no-brainer for me to, to sign here. Coach O'Brien can drop some F-bombs, Brian. <laughs> Yeah, I'm used to that. I, uh, I, I've been used to that going back to about seven years. So, but you know what? I think that's great. He's a he's a fiery guy. He tells it like it is, and you know, most you know sometimes you don't really want to hear the truth because because he's 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 you know he's right, and um, sometimes he just lays it on you, and, he, and you got to grow with it and, and fix the mistakes and, and move on. But I think his passion and, and his fieriness really comes out. But aren't there varying degrees of f bombs? Um, I don't know. I don't. I, you know, I, I I hate to admit it, but I, I'm not. I don't have the greatest mouth either, especially out on the football field. That's why, I, with the hard knocks and being mic'd up, you try to be conscious with it. But once you get into the heat of the battle, I think it just kind of comes out. So, um, well, I'm sure Brady I gotta work was, on my language too. Brady was like that. Yeah, I think you know sometimes you feel like the the f bomb or whatever might emphasize it a little more and, and get you guys going. So I think um, yeah, it's just kind of part of the culture. I would say. Well, good luck. Good luck. Thanks Thank for you. joining us, Brian. Thank you. Thanks for having me.